Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Slay the Spire with Act 3 and the Silent. We're going to be fighting Donadeka, which we haven't seen yet in this guide, so that should be a good time. Now, something that I think is a best practice for everyone to do at all points of Slay the Spire when you're doing something like I am, which is... Uh, picking up the game after having saved and quit is to just go back through all of your relics, your potions, your gold, look at your health, and then look at your deck, just so you can remember what's going on. We selected this path for the act uh, because I have a ton of gold, and so I'd love to go to this shop and maybe blow up some elites if we can, and this gives us the most chance to either fight elites or if we want, um, we can actually completely skip them all together. And sometimes, depending on how your deck shapes up, you might want to be there. So I liked uh, the way that it unfolded. This path over here uh, was one, two, three hallway fights, a shop, four hallway fights, then unknown, unknown, fifth hallway fight, sixth hallway fight, and then an elite and the seven. I mean, it's just, it was too many hallway fights. There's, a, you know, three fires over there. That's fine. But uh, I don't like that many hallway fights if I can do anything about it. Uh, okay. So when we look at our deck, uh, we see that the strength of our deck lies in the fact that we have an insane defense with footwork pluses. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I'm just going to sort my uh, cards by type so that we can put all our attacks up top and then see our powers and our skills below that. So as far as attacks go, I don't have tremendous attacks. Like, this is great, but it's gone once used, okay? Um, you know, so is this. And we need something to take us over the edge this extra sucker punch plus is not good I, I could remove one of these very easily and be happy hand of greed has been doing a good job in terms of getting us money but it's not going to be something we really want to be spending energy on later in the act uh, when we don't need money anymore so you know it did its work in that respect and because we have these incredible powers with the exception of thousand cuts this was like an you know uh, a pick that i probably shouldn't have done and in fact most likely should not have done the great thing about playing at a lower difficulty level um is that you can get away with just picking more cards and and having a lot more margin for error so this card is just an average card especially in this deck i'm not playing a ton of cards to really capitalize on it but it does give me a slight damage boost and because I have so much defense, I can get away with sneaking this out. Uh, but it's not going to add up to a tremendous amount of damage. I think um, what happened was I wanted a little bit of a boost. And, you know, it was just a, a rare card in a, in a hallway reward situation. And I thought, well, why not? And I think that's a good lesson for everybody. Sometimes you can see a rare card reward in a hallway fight. And just be tempted by that gold gleam, you know, at least I can. And you need to just step back and be like, well, wait a minute, this is a rare card. You know, that's cool that I got lucky and got a rare card reward. Uh, but is this good for my deck? And this is probably not. The The way that we were winning is with three footworks and we have a well-laid plans. We've got a couple of backflips and we have a blur. So we have that going for us. But additionally, what we did pick up which will help us scale is um, we've got malaise and we've got nightmare plus so night these cards um, can go a long long way in, in helping us win um, not necessarily together but they're both very strong and scale us piercing wheel we have three of them there's no ever need to take as many as I have taken I just love the card so much the second piercing whale plus was indubitably a mistake um just just too many of them but they are nice because they exhaust themselves so you'll get rid of it eventually but again as you're at this stage of the game um and silent is by it's the worst 
um, character that I play in this game. I have the most to learn with this character. Uh, and, you know, that's just how it is. We're all learning. But when you are lower, you can just experiment and see what works and see what doesn't. But as you get higher, the game will show you really fast uh, what doesn't work. So what I'm looking for to get this deck going would be some more ways to lean into our relics. Remember to talk about our relics. Uh, we have the Regal Pillow for resting if we need health. We have Darkstone Periap, which is not going to be helping us. Um, we have H Happy Flower, which definitely will help us, give us a little energy. But we have Ornamental Fan and Shuriken together, which means like if we could get a Blade Dance, get a few shivs flying around, um, we can stack these up, which would be beautiful scaling for elites and boss fights. We also have the Paper Crane, which makes malaise, which makes all of our weakness just uh, completely cripple the enemy. And we have the Slaver's Collar, which is why I picked a path that can get us more than one elite, because maybe we do want to take advantage of that. Um, and with Bag of Prep, you can see we... <laughs> and the... Uh, Ring of the Snake, we're drawing 10 cards here at the start, um, which is and 9 cards, and that's just really good. So let's see. We have the Repulsor, the Spiker, and the Exploder. This is a very common fight, and this is actually one of the easier fights that you're going to get uh, in Act 3. What you want to do first is take down the Exploder, because in 3 turns they will explode for 30 damage, and we don't want to take that much damage. Then you take out the Repulsor so that they don't put your deck full of dazed cards uh, and slow you down. And then when you can, you take out the Spiker. The Spiker is going to scale up with these Thorns and make it really hard for us to hit them unless we can mitigate the, the Thorn damage. But that's going to be okay. Now, this speaks to another thing that what we want with our deck. A Blade Dance will be good, you know. To, to make these happen, but a noxious fumes, a little bit of poison or something could go a long way too. We can defend almost forever with what we've got, so if we can stall with defense and then put on a whole bunch of poison, that could also be a way that we win. So let's see how we can close this deck out. Right away I see that we have um, enough damage with backstab and hand of greed to kill this guy and get some money. Uh, and that seems pretty pretty good. So I'll just uh, just do that. And then I'm going to play Footwork because nobody is attacking me. And um, I'm going to pass. Crippling Cloud would also be kind of cool. The thing about Donadeca is we want to apply Poison, maybe Weakness for sure to them. But they do have Artifact Charges we have to get through. All right, footwork, right? Footwork, we got all those set up. Happy Flower went off, so we had four energy to work with. Let's Piercing Whale plus. And, oh, hi. We uh, we don't have to worry about too much damage here, and we'll hit you. Um, and we're not going to play this because I don't want to take five thorn damage, so we'll just take one damage from the Repulsor. Not bad. We've got all of our footworks in place so now we can start defending supremely so we can do something cool like this where that's five thorns um, and so we can just dash and die 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 to kill this right now but instead let's see if well yeah I still need to do it. I was going to try to get my shuriken off but I can't get defense if I do it that way Okay. So this guy is going to like buff himself up to boost up his thorns and every once in a while he will attack. Now this is when something like Thousand Cuts actually comes in handy because uh, we can just, you know, do this and the damage that Thousand Cuts deals to him does not trigger the thorns because that's only when he is attacked. So we can slowly chip away in this situation. To be honest, Caltrops on herself would also be pretty good. Alright. Do I want a Nightmare or anything? No. 
But this is why Nightmare is so good, because we have well-laid plans. So we can just well-laid plans, um, and then keep Nightmare until we get what we want. Play defense. Now we have enough defense to where we can actually sucker punch this guy. Um, and then play defense again, just to, just to chip away. We're going to retain that. And I think, um... I think I will just, uh... Nightmare plus something like Blur. And this way we'll just perpetually have Block for, you know, an insane amount of time. And we can just keep playing our card to do that. Uh, dash is good against this guy. Uh, defend is okay. Dagger spray hits twice, so you're going to get the thorns two times. It's kind of dicey. All right. So, uh, well, what we're going to do is just hand of greed and get money from this guy. But I do want to show you, um, we have the, uh, like, if I play this... Okay, we would get a stack of blur, and I'm pretty sure that if I played blur again, it would stack again, meaning that we could persist the block for more than just one turn with multiple copies of that. So we could like play all of this and get a whole bunch of block and set up even longer. Um, but I don't want to do that right now. I'm just going to do this and take the money. All right, and. I mean, backflip plus is is pretty tempting. Do I want another backflip plus? Yeah, I think I do. Drawing cards and getting eight defend is pretty good, especially when we have three footworks. Okay, who did we get? We got ourselves the Orb Walker. The Orb Walker is a guy who wants to give himself three strength at the end of every turn, which we don't like. But we can do some fun stuff here. One. Two. I'm definitely just going to trigger uh, my Shuriken right there. And then the question is, do I want to just give him minus one strength right here uh, with the malaise? And I think it's okay. And the reason I think it's okay to do that is because... Um, the fight's not going to last probably long enough for that to come back up again and me to want to pump a bunch of energy into it. Especially with these burn cards, for example. So, here, um, I'd like to play this to start doing damage, but the fight, again, it's not going to work like that. We're going to play this, and we're going to play um, Backflip Plus, and we're going to play Blur. And we will block exactly. Love to have played the well-laid plans, but we need to block right here. And set up uh, our footwork and such. Okay. So let's weaken him. And let's play this and see what we can get. Uh, we got a Nightmare Plus, which we can't play, unfortunately. So we'll just um, discard it immediately. Hope we can draw it again next time. And we'll just do this and that. And good to go. Almost got him. Alright. And his strength is going up, up, up. Neutralize. This is an opportunity where all-out attack can get rid of the burn for us. So we can defend. Can defend. And all-out attack, discard the burn. Um, and not take the damage. But you're seeing how we're just on the edge of, like, not quite having enough damage. Uh, but this is okay, because we have stuff like this. We needed to draw one more attack card right here, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So we have to take some damage. 
I could have Gambler's Brood, but it's not enough damage for me to justify that. And it was a chance for us to draw a Hand of Greed. We didn't get there, and I don't think this fight is going to get there. So let's just get him. Get a skill potion. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Infinite Blades, I think, is something we really want. It's going to give us an extra attack every turn. Which can help us with Shuriken, but also um, give us even some block sometimes. And they will get better as our strength gets better. I'm going to go over here to this event instead of a hallway fight. And we got a really nice one. We got the Transmogrifier, which is going to let us transform one of our cards. And, well, what card do we want to transform? I think without question, um, you could say Thousand Cuts, but I think it's going to be um, my Sucker Punch, my regular Sucker Punch. Uh, the first card that we took. And we got another Piercing Whale. Well, how about that? All right. So now it is Repulsor and Spiker, but there's two. So let's go. Luckily, Happy Flower triggered for us, and we might need to use a potion in this fight. There's a lot of things going. We're already uh, going to be taking a bunch of damage. We're going to footwork, and... I could, of course, do the same thing, backstab, hand to greed this guy, but then we will take damage... I can't afford to do it yet. I think I have to, uh... Uh, let's see. If I do this... And this... Put that guy at six... And we don't take any damage so I can play this. Okay. So we need a Piercing Whale. It would be the best thing that we could draw right here. We did not draw it, but here we go. Um... We can backflip plus. Oh. Okay, very good. I think what we do here is we're gonna dagger spray. I'm gonna neutralize this guy. And I'm gonna dagger spray. And then Almost kill this guy. Get us enough armor there with our ornamental fan to take nothing. These dazed cards are going to start adding up. Okay, no one is attacking this turn, which is really good because it allows us to just kind of very luxuriously play this card and then um, play this and hit right here happy flowers going off 11 damage coming in oh this is terrific Kill this guy in one shot. And then we blur. And then uh, we survivor. And we'll hit that guy. An attack with hand of greed would be pretty good. This is fine. Backflip. Backflip. Okay, footwork. Shiv. Uh, 
We haven't had to use a potion yet. Let's see if we can keep it there. Once this guy gets to a certain level of thorns, he will no longer um, buff himself. He will just only attack. So we want to kill him before that point. I'm just playing stuff to do damage to him, by the way. Waiting until I can draw something a little bit better. And he might be there. Alright. I can hit him twice, but I would take so much damage it's staggering. I think I just do this. This is much better. Uh, one more. Okay. One. Almost got him. Well, we got the hand agreed. Can we block for enough? Yes, we can, because we're ridiculous. Give me your money. There we go. All right. Leg Sweep is very good, but we have enough cards to do this. We need to go to the shop. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. There's some good stuff here. Um, there's Wraith Form, which is arguably one of the best cards that the Silent has. But it doesn't synergize fantastically well with our footwork situation. There's a Ting Sha, which is a lot of good... Uh, does a lot of good stuff for us. Um, this is not good uh, in general most of the time. Poison Stab, decent. Hmm. Man. I mean, Plachettes could do damage for us. It scales nicely with our strength. Honestly, how many cards do I have that discard besides Survivor? I have Calculated Gamble, I guess. An all out attack. It's only a couple of times when this would trigger. Is there another shop? There's one way up here. I, I at first glance, I was like, oh, this is great because I saw Wraith form and everything, but it's not that great. Yeah, I want to take a card out of my deck. Maybe just get rid of, like, a basic defend. I have a regular strike I can dump. Hmm. Man. I'm not going to take anything else. It's odd. Oh boy. Uh This is a fight I don't know if we can win. It's easier on these ascensions, but this is the one elite fight that I was really worried about with this deck because this guy doesn't care if you defend and scale. He's just going to hit you for a bajillion. So we have we're going to have to capitalize on doing some kind of nightmare trick on this guy to win. Uh, 
Mm, I'm gonna keep this to try to trigger Shuriken. I gotta think to myself, like, what is my way of winning with this deck? Maybe enough footworks would help me block for enough. I gotta play a footwork, sure. Oh yeah, dagger throw also with the Tingsha, I suppose. All right, we got one strength up. <laughs> it's one of those situations where it's like, um, could I? <laughs> it's not thousand cuts, is it? It could be malaise. One, two. exactly decided yet what our dream card is going to be. It may be that we can win with thousand cuts and defense over a long period of time in this fight because if he's going to keep hitting us for like 50 per turn we can keep up with that for a long time with you know some ungodly number of dexterity. And if we malaise him significantly. So let's set this up. One. Two. We keep him weak as well. Should take the wind out of his sails. Now I'm not playing footwork right now because I think it's my last one. Um... I'm waiting for Nightmare to come back around. I could also Nightmare Blur and then just keep playing Blur and always have block up every single turn that's enormous. But I don't know how how reliable it is to, to lean back on that. This guy is the game's like hard counter against defensive decks that don't do damage fast enough. Um, you can get away with stalling like this against a lot of fights but this guy is like you also need to be able to do damage to me because um, I have a million hit points and I'm going to hit you really hard. So these are things that we need to consider. Um, I'm going to backflip. So now we fully block And I'm just going to do damage. I mean, I need to start doing damage to this guy, so here he goes. I'm going to keep Footwork Plus and Malaise. Now... Hmm. I will say, um, it has been a long time since I've gone back in time and played the giant head. His pattern is different when um, you're not playing on Ascension 20. And so what this means is, 
it, on higher level ascension, he has a harder pattern where he gives you like he does he's not awake for five turns and then it goes down to three turns as you get higher up and he's just kind of sitting there waiting for you and then he starts just hitting you for like 50 60 damage a turn after that countdown wears off but in this setting at this low he's just consistently doing me about 15 to 20 damage um and that's a different ball game all right so i think what i'm gonna do then I'm going to see if I, uh, can beat this guy with a million footworks. I was going to do malaise, but I just think it's too hard to play malaise like six times in a row for full X value right now. Um, but watch this. If I footwork again, and now we get, you know, three more. We're going to be in a really good spot. And so what we want to do is uh, be sure that we can block this. Okay. So we can survive her. And let's just dump this for now. And then... Uh, I'm going to keep weakness on him. Actually, I was going to play blur, but... Not entirely necessary right here. I really would like to have... Uh, I'll keep this and this. An after image. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be a funny turn. We've got four energy, which is great. One, you could see his damage is going up by basically three every turn, too. So that even with this scaling, we won't be able to block him indefinitely but we have a lot of time now to just like play one defensive card and then all the rest be offense so I'll keep one defensive card and a weaken Okay, um, let's try to get some more skills for flechettes. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's start scaling up our strength. One, two. Okay. I'll keep this and this. Might as well get the piercing whales out of our deck. Yeah, see, he says tick tock, tick tock because his damage is going up. One, two, three, strength up. Take his strength down. Okay. Keep a defend. You can slowly see why this is, you know, just a crazy contest to have with this guy because his damage is going to go up too high for us. But right now, we're okay. I'm going to just keep going with my strength. By the way, another thing to explain is this guy has a slow debuff, which means every time you play a card, you get to do 10% more damage to him from attacks. So the more cards you can play before you play attacks, the better. So you generally want to play your defensive cards first to your skills and stuff, and then do attacks, and that can help you also output more damage to this guy. 
So that's something that we want to keep in the back of our mind. I'll keep a backflip uh, and a piercing wheel. You can see that uh, we have the gambler's brew, but we really just don't need to use it because of retaining cards from well-laid plans. All right, so we have one, two attacks easily enough. I'm going to piercing wheel just to get rid of it, honestly. And then backflip. Okay, great. So we can play three attacks right now. And still comfortably block. I'm going to have piercing whale. And we're going to go one. Two. And we're saving dagger spray for the end because he's actually taking 18 from each hit. What you want to do is save, if you have multi-hit stuff, you want to save it for the end against this slow to, to capitalize on it. And indeed, we're going to win. Having 18 dexterity does that for you. But on a higher ascension, we would have gotten killed by this guy at this point. I'm going to keep this. And this. Okay. Okay, and we have Blur for our block, and this guy dies easily. So we did it. Well, how about that? I was really scared about that, but... Footwork for the win. We got a Juzu bracelet, which we got in our last run as well, which just makes it so we don't have to fight hallway fights in encounter, a question mark encounter rooms, which is nice. Okay, so Caltrap Plus is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for at this point. I don't need another footwork. I mean, I could take it, but this is going to give us some good damage. And these guys like to do multiple hits, so it'll be an extra source of damage for us. Okay, so we're on floor 41, and we found a shop, uh, and that's tremendous. We were going for this shop, but we found a shop sooner, and this will give us the opportunity to potentially look at two shops if we need to. So, the Donadeca fight is two big, huge dudes who are going to hit us for a ton of damage every turn. One guy will hit you twice. And then the other dude will buff his strength, and they alternate. And what that means is, just like in that giant head fight, they're going to be scaling, scaling, scaling up, doing more and more damage. They have um, not as many hit points as a giant head, about half that many each. But they're, they're beefy. They get armor, and they also start to put status cards into your deck. We need to take them down quickly. We'll, we're going to do a good job with our defense, but over time, I don't think we can keep up with them. Like, I'm honestly concerned. So what we have to do at this shop, if possible, is come up with a solution uh, for our damage problem. So let's see what they've got. So right now, what we could get um, for damage is none of this right now we really want. Like, Deadly Poison unupgraded is not going to do it for us. Um, these are all unupgraded. We already have a well lit, but it's just not helpful. Um, the, the Cauldron is going to give us a bunch of potions, but we're set on that, all right? Horncleat is amazing. 
for one turn, you get 14 block. All of these captain relics, the ship relics, the anchor, the cleat, and, and the wheel are tremendous. Um, but that's not going to be a long-term solution. The strength potion is quite helpful. Power potion, very helpful. Um, but one thing that I am looking at is panache. Panache would be an extra kick of damage too. We will have four energy against the boss because of the collar. And sometimes we'll have five with the flower. We have some zero cost stuff. So this could go off for us and give us just that extra source of damage. But it's not really what I was looking for. It's helpful. Um, but it's a consideration. And sometimes you have to just take half measures and do what you can, right? Um, the other relic here, ink bottle, like, this is good, you know, but it's not worth 250 gold, you know, just every, every couple of turns you're going to draw an extra card, you know, <sighs> yeah, but um, that's not really what we need right now, so... I think at the bare minimum, you know, Liquid Bronze is actually okay with our Caltrops uh, to do a little bit of damage. But again, we're going to just have to be finding damage wherever we can get it, I guess. Uh, a little bit of, you know, Caltrops, a little bit of Panache, a little bit of Thousand Cuts, you know, plus our Strength Scaling here. We could also be looking for some kind of Shiv Generating card to get some Shuriken, but we don't see any here. So I'm going to buy Panache and nothing else. I could remove a card, okay? Like, we ha we definitely have some excess stuff that we don't need right now. I could easily take out um, something right here. But also, uh, our Infinite Blades goes nicely with Panache. But the problem is, like, it's a very expensive to withdraw a card at this point. And I want to kind of actually maybe save up for the next shop, see if we can get a look at a power or a relic that will take us over the edge. So, you know, we tried, uh, but we didn't come up with anything tremendous. Oh, but we lucked out here. So I took um, an unknown right here instead of this hallway fight uh, because we've already had one, two, three, four. Oh, no, just three hallway fights. So after the first two, we're in the hard batch. And we don't need to make life harder on ourselves uh, right now, but we got a chest. So what do we find in here? Question card. Okay. So, of course, you know, the events are going to be uh, tilted in our favor with this. But now that we have this, we might want some hallway fights to, to get some more card rewards, potentially. Let's see what we can get here. And it's a white beast statue. So this is going to give us potions, which, again, we're full up, but... This will allow us to more liberally use potions. And because now we have this, we're full on potions. We have the question card. Um, I'm going to just start taking elite fights. Now, of course, there's this elite fight. So I could go upgrade, um, hallway fight, elite, hallway fight, shop. But let's go here, I think. And fight the elite. And we, we can fall back and rest if we need to. So this is actually um, a very challenging uh, elite fight. We saw this one before. It is the Reptomancer, and she's got her daggers out. But we have a good amount of AoE, and we've got these. Uh, so we actually drew all-out attack and dagger spray in our first turn. So let's do this. I'm going to... Uh, dagger spray. And... Mm, okay. Interesting. How do I want to do this? There's a lot of... A lot of these cards I actually want. I'm going to drink... And get a skill potion right here, by the way. Uh, Alright, whatever. 
Not exactly what I was looking for, but this is okay. I'm just trying to free up a potion slot, to be honest. I was looking for maybe something to give us energy or cards or something, but this is okay. We need to play this for sure. We cannot get this to give us plus one strength to make this to 11 to kill this guy. So unfortunately, we have to kind of make that play, which is wasted because I wanted to hit, put that into the Reptomancer, but we just didn't have it. Uh, I'll play Infinite Blades. And then this will give us a strength and, you know, uh, kill all of the, the knives for now. So this is good. All right. So she's made one knife. Now she actually wants to attack us right away, which I'm not super thrilled about, but our happy be flower went off so let's see can we get enough block for this I'm gonna backflip just see if I can what kind of cards I can come up with I don't think I can play thousand cuts right here because I need to do a lot of blocking that's 26 damage one two Three. Okay. I'm going to do this. I should have bashed here just to kill this. Uh, this is fine. We block fully. She'll start making knives at some point. I guess not. Okay, then. Oof. I don't want Nightmare right now. I mean, I kind of do, but I, I can't. All right, so we're going to get dinged up here. This is a tough fight. Uh, oh, she's just going to keep going all... So where's my weaken? One, two... Hmm. All right. Okay. We're here, some weaken right here. All right. So, we got th three attacks, which is good. I think this is going to be this play. Alright. We should have this in hand now. The Act 3 Elites are just no joke. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to backflip right here. Um, I'm in panache. And uh, this looks excessive, but I'm going to just give her a full malaise. So for the rest of the fight, she's just not as ornery. Her multi-attacks will be reduced significantly by that. Okay, now we can start leaning into stuff like Thousand Cuts and just dash and use all of this to give us a strength. And we have outscaled her. We had to build up, get all our powers in play, but we're there. Okay. Uh, all right.
I want to see if I can get another attack. Nope. Going to go ahead and just get piercing whales out. Five energy turn. Oh, now she's finally trying to summon stuff. Okay. 24 right there. 16 takes you down to 34, 28. Then Sucker Punch, then Hand of Greed. And this will help us for the next shop. Oh, wow. So we got the Dream Synergy, the Potion Belt with the White Beast Statue. So we lucked into that. And we got a Regen Potion. Now all we're missing is the Sacred Bark to just be ridiculous. But this is already ridiculous. So now we can be a little bit more luxurious with our potions. Okay. And these are for rewards, so what do we want? Honestly, I'm just going to keep going with these Caltrops. Uh, we're going to lean into that pretty heavily as a way to just use our defense to do damage. I'm going to upgrade... Uh, what does Panache do upgraded? Just more damage? Nah, it's okay. Um, and this is plus one. Yeah, that's tempting. Little by little, we'll get there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and regen pod immediately. This is a long fight. Panache. Infinite Blades. Um, if this Spire Growth wants to try to constrict me, I very well might drink my Artifact Potion, but we'll see. I don't have very much to block with, do I? Hmm. There's just so much damage that this guy wants to do. Why has he got to be such a jerk? I'm just going to do this. See if I can come up with exactly this. That was the Hail Mary right there. Plus... Beautiful. We did uh, trigger our panache right there, too. See that? A little extra 10 damage. And great. Now we almost take nothing. Okay. So, he's going to do 9. I'll s I could save uh, malaise pretty much for when I want, but... Uh, this is fine. Upgrading malaise is good because then I can just use it on zero energy. All right, now he wants to do his thing. The question is, like, how concerned am I that he's going to start constricting me? I think it's enough of a concern that I just do this so I don't take a bunch of damage on this fight. I'm going to actually nightmare um, Shiv. I know that's very strange, but it'll just give me a way to uh, put forth a bunch of things uh, in, in in terms of a panache and a shuriken that'll help us for the rest of the fight. All right, so he tried to constrict us, but we used the uh, artifact charge from the Ancient Potion to make him not be able to do that. And yeah, we can Thousand Cut right here, and then all of these will do an extra two damage. So this is really uh, convenient for us. We just set this up. We'll just go one, two. This is also going to give us some block. Um, and do that. Okay. So we take damage because we couldn't weaken him, but it's okay. Tough fight. 
He's going to try to constrict us again. Interesting. Well, not much we can do this time, so it's just footwork. And then... Uh, shiv. Sucker punch. Backflip. Okay. Need to get our footworks in play against this guy. So the constriction does 10 damage per turn. So it does not go through your block, though. So as long as you're blocking well, it's okay. Uh, I'm going to play this just to trigger. I don't care really what it discards. Uh, and we got him with Panache. Okay. Actually, that might have been 1,000 cuts. Got a Speed Potion, which is great for blocking. All right, now we have some interesting decisions. We could stack another one of these. Uh, but I think a dodge and roll plus is quite helpful. Especially with all our footworks. All right. It is the Maw. All right, so... The Maw is demanding that we race. Let's go for it. Uh, I want to try to find some more attack here. This is quite strong, actually. So we got Panache off, we got an attack, and we weakened him. We got to play a footwork. It's a pretty good start. Alright, so we need this for sure. And we need this. And here you go. Let's dance, buddy. Alright, so he's going to, you know, keep buffing himself up. So, indeed, one like that. And then we just can go this, this, that. Do we have any zeros that we want to try to get into right here? Not really. Just play this to do the damage. On the eight, huh? All right. Uh, okay. This will give us twelve, sixteen block. Plus, he'll be weakened, so this should be sufficient. Yep, just enough. But it's getting scary. Okay, great. This is exactly what I wanted, but some kind of time to really, really build ourselves up. Let's make him weak next turn. Okay. This is perfect for us. I'm actually going to nightmare these Caltrops. We can just Piercing Wheel this guy, so he's going to do zero damage basically this turn. Um, well, he's not. He's going to do three. But with Caltrops Plus, he's going to take eight damage when he every hit, so this is just doing 24 damage to him. So we're just going to kill him with Caltrops. Okay. Alright, so now we have 23 Thorns up. And so he does want to hit us four times for 13 damage, but we just um, Piercing Will. And now it's only 28 damage, and 
Now let's do that. And we defend and we survivor that like that. And now we fully block and uh, he is dead. Oh, he actually, I did my math wrong. It's four times 23. Yes, indeed. That's too bad. I wish I could have uh, retained Hand of Greed right there. if there's any way I could get back to it. Probably not. It's fun, though. Ah, no, I can't just play defense because he's going to die from 1,000 cuts. And then next turn, he's going to attack and die. Yeah, all right, fine. Let's just get out of here. Fire potion, nice. I think I take an infinite blades. I need as many shivs as I can for my shuriken. Ah, another shop. Wow. Okay. Mummified hand is just about right for us. Um, so whenever you play a power card, your hand costs another card. Just will cost zero um, for the rest of the turn. And the reason that's good is because um, if I sort right here by type, you can see that I have one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten powers. Um, so that'll just help us like make sure that we can survive long enough um, against Donadeka to play our cards to scale. And I think we should have enough. Um, now I could rest right here for the thirteen hit points, but is there an upgrade that is going to take us the distance? I don't think I need to guarantee that. I think this is good. Extra damage. Alright. So they have 250 each. Two charges of artifact. Let's get it done. So you'll see right away uh, on this very first hand um, how nice the mummified hand is going to be for us. So we can play Infinite Blades, and it made Strike free. We play Footwork, and it made Defend free. We play Thousand Cuts, and it made Blur free. So we're going to... I'm going to focus on uh, this one on the left first. Just pick whichever one you want. One. Get a block. Get a block. Do this. Um... Do I want to gamble? And it's only for one card. It's okay. I'm going to take a little damage. Alright, so now he has buffed their strength, and he's going to put armor, and here we go. So we'll play footwork. We will piercing whale. This is just going to absorb one of their artifact charges, unfortunately. I will hit right here. And we have 19 block. We need 26 block, but we've got it right here. I'll do this. And we'll just go ahead and do that. And we fully block. You can see our footwork is scaling up. But we need our caltrops and stuff in play here. Here they come. I wish I had the better Caltrops, uh, but I think I have to take what I can get. Oh, you know what? Um, I didn't have to take that. I could have used my backflip first to, to look for a, a better version of it. Yeah, that was kind of a mistake. Because um, there it is right there. Uh, I'm going to play Caltrops. And Caltrops. Um, because they make everything free. And we'll Piercing Whale. Now they no longer have Artifact Charges. So the next time we do that, it will actually stop them. I could use this right now. Um, but it's only... I'm not going to take a ton of damage, so it's okay. Alright, so now they're taking 8 damage every time they hit us. And 
we're going to get a whole bunch of caltrops in our hand now the important thing to remember about nightmare is that it adds the cards to your hand it you don't it, it doesn't count against what you draw so you get to draw your normal hand and then we get the shiv and all this other stuff so everything in our hand is going to be free this turn one two three right uh Let's go ahead and do that. Where's Panache? We haven't really got there yet, have we? I'm going to hold my malaise for when I have more energy. Okay. And... Actually, I'm going to use it right now. I was going to hold it, but... Um... Let's just give this guy weakened so that we don't take any damage this turn. We're almost there. We just need to work through our deck and get all our powers in play. Alright. And now it starts to be where it'll tip in our favor. Backflip first. Draw stuff up. Yep. And we get to do things like this. Weaken the guy. Now he's down to doing 18 damage. And we Dagger Spray. And then we can Shiv and get a Strength Boost. We fully block at this point. Dagger Throw. Great, there's Panache. Um, I'm going to discard a Piercing Whale. And then we play this, make a card free. Do I want to play Piercing Whale right now? It's not doing anything for me. So I don't think I need to. And we fully block. So I'm just going to play this and do a ton of damage. You know what's funny is just because of our 1,000 cuts and our Caltrops, I haven't even been hitting this guy, and he's, you know, nearly at half health. All right, here we go. Here's the last Infinite Blades. And this means that we can dodge and roll. We can dash. We can shiv. And you see they start putting these daze cards into your hand, which is a bummer. Um, but we do this. And we were about to take some damage. Um, but now we're only going to take one. So this dude is going to take 17 twice. or do, uh, Actually, yeah, he did take 17 twice. And this is over. Backflip. Yeah, sure, piercing wheel. Why not? I'm going to weaken this guy because this guy is going to die this turn. Uh, we'll just make it so when this guy hits us once, he dies from the Caltrops. Hit over here. Hit over here. And the Panache did it. Uh, we will discard uh, Calculated Gamble, actually. I want to keep these cards in my hand so they phase out from being ethereal at the end of the turn, and uh, we don't want to keep any of those. Get out. All right. And <laughs> last footwork. Play it. Have some fun. And uh, goodbye. All right, so we did it. Didn't even use our potions. Um, I was worried a little bit about our damage, but our powers became obscene. We got the mummified hand, and we had enough time to play everything to scale up to beat those guys. If we would have had a different boss, things would have been, of course, different. Um, like if it was, you know, the woke bloke, I'm not going to take all those powers, but it was Donadeca, so we knew right at the beginning of the act what it was, and we planned accordingly throughout. And we won. Not a perfect run, of course, but good enough. Got a lot of relics. Um, had a pretty big deck, but had a lot of fun. Bam. All right. So now we've unlocked um, the Ascension Climb with the Silent. Okay. And so we also got some more cards. Bane, 
Catalyst and Corpse Explosion. Corpse Explosion is one of the best cards that the Silent has. Um, a lot of people love Catalyst. It's fine. Uh, you know, you can kill a boss with it. And Bane is meh. Um, but we also, perhaps more importantly, unlock the defect. So if you guys are still interested and you want to see me continue this kind of beginner's guide by walking through a complete play with all of the characters, the next objective would be to do the defect. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something about Sway the Spire and the Silent and are enjoying the game. Please post any comments that you have um, down below. Any questions, concerns, anything you'd like to see me do. Love to chat with you about the game. Take care.